the morning. The entrance is number five, five, one. Five, five, one, give praise to the Lord. Oh, that sounds very <laughs> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. the Lord be with you Amen. our mass intentions are for special intention of Joshua Russo and for Mary Lou Brownlee Toots Murray Michael Quinn Geraldine Rock and it's wonderful, my mom and dad, but if it's not for just the person that's here, that's for all our parents. Ever mindful of our journey towards God, we sin and we are weak. And we ask the Lord for forgiveness before we begin the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have done. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most speak. Therefore, I ask all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may, through love of the Spirit, ourselves rise to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and you through the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying. And he has seen a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days Saul was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, Jesus is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood, true drink. Today's gospel tells us that the failure to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink, in, and drink his blood results in death. Death is the loss of life, and the Eucharist is the source of life. Jesus says that if you fail to eat his flesh and drink his blood, you have no life within you. This bold teaching of Jesus should cause us to stop and think and examine our approach to the most holy Eucharist. Sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking that going to Mass and receiving communion is something we do as a favor to a Lord. But in truth, it is God's most profound favor to us because the Eucharist is the gateway to eternal life. And without it, we have no life within us. Our spirit dies because we lose the presence of Jesus Christ. Looking at the negative effect of not receiving the Most Holy Eucharist can be very useful. Sometimes we need to consider the consequences of our actions and the way of motivating us to greater faithfulness. For this reason, the fact that failure to eat the flesh of the Son of God results in death should be very motivating. It should fill us with holy fear, the loss of life, the presence of God within us. This holy fear is a true gift from God and is in fact one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Reflect today upon the interior attitude towards the Most Holy Eucharist. Do you see your participation in the Holy Mass as a favor to offer to God? Or do you see it as it is the life-giving source of eternal life? Reflect on how important 
this precious gift truly is, and recommit yourself to the faithful without participating in the most holy gift. There is a story. It has to do with the deal with the life of St. Thomas More, the great English translator. In his disputes with Henry, King Henry VIII, King St. Thomas sided with the church and in, with the church and for his actions, he was sentenced to death in the Tower of London. One day, his wife comes up to him, visiting him in the tower and throwing herself on her knees. She implores him to give him, give in to the king and therefore save his life. She said, just think, just think how long we can live together. Why do you want to die so young? St. Thomas More asked his wife, how long do you think we might be able to live? She says, oh dear, for 20 more years? 20 more years at least? St. Thomas replies to her, 20 years? 20 years? For the sake of 20 years shall I give my eternal life and, and my eternal happiness? In this gospel this morning we hear, the people disputed among themselves, how can this man give us the flesh to eat? The people like St. Saint Saint Thomas More's wife kept everything on a human level and the people saw only cannibalism and, and St. Thomas' wife only thought of this world. She did not want to let him die. God gave the people manna and quail. He sustained them as they journeyed in the desert. And God gave us his only son, who in turn gave his body and blood, the Eucharist. And today, the Eucharist sustains us while we journey on this life, in this world. How many times do we listen to those, these words? Life everlasting. And do we, really, do we really comprehend? Do we really understand? Is it possible? Yes, for us who believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, when we look at our life beyond death, when we see the future of the, with the eyes of faith, hope, and love. As Jesus says this morning, whoever eats this bread will live forever. Let us pray. We pray, pray for the church throughout the world as being led by Pope Francis and Ronald Peter Favreau, that they may constantly remember that we believe in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the men finishing up their retreat in the in the Al Alliston, that they will come back renewed and full of life. We pray the Lord. Lord For peace in our world, especially in the troubled areas, we pray the Lord. Lord we pray for all our sick, our suffering, and God's healing hand be upon them. We pray the Lord. Lord we pray for the right to, right to life, natural birth and natural death, we pray the Lord. Lord yeah. And we pray for all our loved ones, especially those who remember with, with love this morning. Eternal rest grant them upon them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine. May their souls and souls of all the faithful depart through the mercy of God.
rest in peace. Amen. And for the intentions of, of this Mass, for special intention of Joshua Russo, and for the repose of the souls of Mary Lou Romley, Toots Mare, Michelle Quinn, Gerald Rock, and Mom and Dad, we pray to the Lord. Lord In all our prayers, we place for the through the intercession of the Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Heavenly Father, hear all our prayers. Those spoken aloud, but most of the Lord, those ones we hold in our hearts for those we love, that they may be answered if it's according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number three, four, at the back of the Sunday Missiles, on page six to four. Number three, four, I am the bread of life. We will begin with verse number three of number three, four. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, 
make us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers in the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of praise as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed. He himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we can, may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne, with all the saints, on this constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained it for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourselves all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our God, the Lord our God, how be thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to empty but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I love you.
just a reminder, there is adoration this afternoon in the chapel. And at 3 o'clock, we have to pray the divine mercy. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring you, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Père, the Feast, and Saint Esprit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Together we sing number four, nine, five, four, nine, five, you walk by faith. 